Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey and all teams. Last night, the St. Louis Blues were eliminated by the Nashville Predators, so we're here to discuss that. And this is a tough series for me because I wanted St. Louis to win, but I predicted Nashville to win, so I'm on the fence here. But I am happy. I'm happy for a lot of Nashville players. Uh, Arvidsson has been playing great. Uh, P.K. Subban has been playing great. Uh, Yossi, Ellis, the list goes on. Pecorine has been absolutely outstanding. So let's let's dive into this a little bit. What's your thought on this series that just ended? Well, to be honest, I didn't predict this matchup in all honesty because I kind of underestimated the Nashville Predators quite a bit. Uh, I didn't pick them to advance, whereas you know you did pick them, and you're kind of looking like a genius right now. Just on a fluke for picking the Predators because man, they look to be on a mission. They kind of remind me of Pittsburgh last year. You know, they're playing with just so much intensity; mm. it's contagious, and it's making me want to watch them more and more. Uh, it truly is. But for me, I think the big highlight for Nashville. There's two key areas. One, Pekka Rinne is lights out right now. Yeah, he's leading the playoffs in goals against average and save percentage and as well as their uh, offense that they're getting from their blue line. Oh, yeah. That is unmatched by any other team in the playoffs right now. And if you look at the stats for the Predators, their defense are clearly having a big input on the goal scoring for this club. They're getting so many goals and offense from the back end. It's, it's unmatched right now in the playoffs. It really is. And to me, those are the two main highlights for why the Predators are having so much success. Yep, the top uh, the top five in points of the Nashville Predators so far this uh, playoffs. Uh, Ryan Ellis has nine, who leads the team, or is tied to lead the team. We have Yossi with eight points. He's in third. And P.K. Subban has seven and fifth. So, you know, when you have three defensemen in your top five uh, points, that's that's pretty apparent that your blue line is is the most crucial part of your team. Yeah, and it's being insanely effective. And you know, watching these guys, you know, they're purposely setting things up in order for their defense to pinch, in order for their defense to join rushes. You know, yep. this is all strategic. It's not just, you know, luck of defense, you know, they're just randomly throwing pucks at net and hoping for something to happen. No, this is all strategic. And I mean a lot of it goes back to the coaching staff in order to scout. And to me, it's very apparent that <laughs> they've done their homework on what absolutely, they want to do absolutely I, and their blue line is just unmatched right now and i would have never predicted that i can say with confidence and my own opinion but i can say with confidence for me that from what i've seen from the national predators so far this playoffs they are the best they're the best puck cycling team in the league right now in the playoffs and it's just a, honestly it's a joy to watch it's yeah. it's fun hockey to watch i mean they're, they're low scoring games uh some of them most of them but uh it's it's fun to watch and because they're having so much fun doing it. It's contagious. There's there's no other team that's smiled more, I think, than Nashville. They're just having a, a heck of a time, I guess. Well, P.K. Subban, that guy never stops smiling. Yeah. You know, on or off the ice, he's always smiling. Yeah. The guy's always in a good mood, so. He's, he's quite the character. Yeah, he is quite a character. Yeah. So that's almost kind of like a hidden storyline. P.K. Subban's now going to the Western Conference Final, and the Montreal Canadiens are on the golf course. So that's kind of a hidden storyline here. Absolutely. If Nashville goes all the way to the Cup Final, wow, you know, that storyline kind of grows a little bit. That's huge. Yeah, and I see a lot of uh, outlets probably picking up on that and kind of running with it a little bit. P.K. Subban playing for the Stanley Cup. Montreal Canadiens and Shea Weber currently sitting at home. Yeah. So I think... If they do advance, again, I think it'll become uh, more of an analysis on that trade, Subban and Weber. But uh, I also wanted to touch on St. Louis. Man, I, I feel so bad for St. Louis. It seems like they're always in the playoff picture, but they just can't get it done. Yeah, it's frustrating. What it is, I'm not sure, because obviously over all these decades of them always having you know, the ability to get into the playoffs, we've had so many different players come and go, GMs, coaches, but it doesn't matter who comes in or out. The team just can't get over that hurdle, get to the cup final. I mean, yeah, they've been in the cup final before, but they just can't win at all. And it's really tough to point a finger because you look at guys that have gone through you know, their organization like an Al McInnes, Chris Pronger, Brett Hall. I mean, they've had a lot of Hall of Fame talent and they just couldn't get it done. The St. Louis Blues are the Washington Capitals of the West. Yeah, that would they be just, a good way to look at it. They I just guess. can't get it done. But hey, the Capitals are still in it. They're still alive. Let's still not, in uh, it. Yeah, let's not so. talk about that too soon. Uh, Let's, let's just switch to goaltenders because yep. this series probably had uh, two of the best goaltenders in the playoffs so far. 
So Pecorino has let in 14 goals in 10 games. That's absolutely incredible in, in the playoffs. That's that's unbelievable. So he he's he had like you said he has the best stats of any goalie. Yeah, he does, and uh, he he just looks so confident. Mm-hmm. And the the Predators blue line is obviously helping their situation some, but. You know, I, I admit that I was completely wrong about Pekka Rene. Earlier this year, I said that he was on his way out, and and I felt that he may not even be around next year. And I thought that Saros would come in as the backup this year, next year as potentially the starter if, if Rene really struggled at the end of this year. He's done everything and proved me wrong. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not, not afraid to admit that I was wrong there, and I'm very happy to see, see him have success so far in this playoffs. And uh, just to switch over to Jake Allen as well, MVP of St. Louis. Uh, yep, hands down. In, in the playoffs question. so far, yep. he's, he's been absolutely outstanding and it's such a joy to watch considering what happened to him this year. And he had such a, a downtime and a, a tough spot in that midseason point to see him bounce back and come back and, and be probably the second best goalie in, in the playoffs is incredible. Yeah, because there's a lot of question marks around Jake Allen during the regular season when they sent him down to kind of, you know, boost his confidence and then insert him back into the lineup. Well, since then, he's kind of answered all those critics, right? Because a lot of people were saying, well, you know, maybe he's not going to pan out to be that starting goaltender that St. Louis really thought they had with this guy. But obviously, he's proved them all wrong and he proved that he can be that guy. Based on his playoff performance this year, I no longer doubt Jake Allen whatsoever, based on what I've seen from him. But Pekka Rene, unfortunately, for Jake Allen, was just that much better yep. in this series. The guy was lights out. And if he can continue that, Nashville could have big-time success. Absolutely. I'll never say they could go all the way, because I don't want to jinx anybody by any means, but they could see success and could advance once again if he keeps playing to that caliber. But at the rate he's going, I, I don't see any reason why he can't do that. In it's, the next series. It's going to be fun to watch, yeah, regardless of who time. they play. We don't know yet. but Yeah, and the fan base in Nashville, my goodness, are they ever rocking this place? I, I've read online that a lot of people have, hate on the, the Nashville fan base. and They're very rude. They're very uh, like hmm. judgmental and like even if someone said racist. And wow. I have never seen that. No, I've, uh, I've never. I mean, admittedly, I haven't watched a lot of Nashville until this year. Uh, but everything I've seen recently has been absolutely outstanding. They're incredible fans. So, yeah. I mean, I, if, if something happened in the past that I missed, then I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but uh, everything I see looks looks great. Their fans are awesome. So Yeah, and they're really building their brand, too, because they're strategically bringing in some big names and big stars in and around Nashville, country music, that sort of thing. And they're kind of inserting them into the organization, you know, whether it's, you know, singing national anthem or doing some interviews and thoughts and all that stuff. And it's really building the Nashville Predators brand because when you have a famous country musician stepping in and saying things about your organization, it just puts more eyes on you know, your team and what you guys are all about and what you're currently doing. And right now they're having an amazing run. Kind of reminds me of the Oilers in 2006. Yeah. You know, it's kind of that Cinderella run. Oh, How yeah. many people would have predicted Nashville would be in this current position outside of you <laughs> seems like you're one of the only guys i talked to that really i don't know, said I don't know okay I said yeah nashville either. you know they're, they're going far but in 2006 i wouldn't have taken edmonton to do what they did it reminds me of uh 2012 i think when la finished eighth right and uh, john the quick played absolutely amazing yeah pecorene is kind of doing the same thing right now a goalie can take you right to the cup they, they really can We've seen it. We've seen it so many times. Look at Halak when he played for Montreal, and then they took out Washington and Pittsburgh. That was all Halak. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. There was multiple games he where was he had unbelievable. fifty shots, and he would just. Oh. Like, it it can happen. And I think that's when I developed my first ulcer that year, <laughs> uh, with Halak and everybody on Facebook and other social media platforms putting up that red stop sign, stop sign. instead of saying stop. It said Halak. I was <laughs> seeing that in my sleep. I, I have a puck that says that. Actually. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, so I'll just ask you, how do you think St. Louis does next year? I really don't know. There's kind of a lot of finger pointing in St. Louis because it's the same thing year after year. You look on paper and this team to me is stacked, yet they just cannot have playoff success. What is it? It doesn't matter if it was 20 years ago, last year, this year, it doesn't matter. St. Louis Blues just cannot have success. So they had the coaching change midseason, and now Mike Yo has stepped in. Uh, do you think they have a more successful season under his belt 
uh, during a full season next year. I liked Yo when he was with Pittsburgh. Now, he wasn't the head coach. He was the assistant coach. However, I find that he may not be the best communicator in a lot of senses. I don't think he's a player's coach. No, and that's actually what I was going to say next. He actually kind of reminds me a little bit of Tortorella, the way he kind of yells at players and almost treats them like children. Um, I don't really agree with some of his tactics, but obviously the guy knows hockey inside oh, and out. Yeah. Uh, so there's no knock on him there. If, if I had to pinpoint something specifically that I'd say, well, you know, Mike Yo, uh, I really don't like this about your uh, coaching style, it would be the communication. Mm. So maybe that could play a big factor. Maybe they need a player's coach in there. But then again, what was Kitten Hitchcock? Is he not a player's coach? I mean, to me, he's a really good coach. You know, yeah, I think, I think and, a lot of guys liked him, minus the goaltenders. Yeah, but you know, St. Louis just cannot have success. And I really think the other year bringing in Ryan Miller, I really think that was the wrong move. And I think if they hadn't have did that, St. Louis may have went further that mm-hmm. other year. But that's just me, and that's all hindsight now. But what does St. Louis do going forward? I, I guess Tarasenko did not get along with Hitchcock. I forgot about that. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's hard to backtrack. But No, no, that's um, fine. Yeah, I do I, I, think, I still think they make the playoffs next year. I think they're still a very strong team. They're always contending for the playoffs. Yep. Um, you know, that's one thing you're always going to get out of St. Louis. They're always going to be in that playoff hunt regardless. And to me, they're one of the most consistent franchises next to like Detroit Absolutely. when it comes to making the postseason. Yep. They have great scouting. They obviously have great management because they're bringing in you know, the key players for key roles in order to have that continued success. Exactly. It's just to get over that final hurdle to have success in the playoffs, which they haven't never really been able to achieve. I mean, yeah, they've made it to the cup final before, but they've never won at all. And St. Louis is a great hockey city as well. They've got some great fans. Yeah. So it'd, it'd be nice to see that team have actual success and, and bring a cup home for the first time in over 50 years. So, Well, I really thought they were going to do it when Gretzky was there. Yeah. I really did. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, you know, there's so much more to talk about here in both these teams, oh, yeah. but uh, we'll wrap it up there because we're going to be talking about Nashville uh, coming up in the next series, when whoever they play. So we'll stop here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is your first video on Post to Post, we hope you hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. And until the next video, we'll see you then. Adios.